Hey everybody, Punisher88 here, coming to you live with a very special weekend review. How special? Well, today we're finally hitting video number 50. And uh, this is a pretty big deal to me. Because I'll be honest, when I first started posting videos on YouTube, I never expected to get to video number 10, let alone 50. So this is really something else. Uh, to make it even more special, for the past, I'd say about two weeks now, um, over on the Punisher 88 Facebook page, uh, I had posted a, a list of first appearance comic books for you guys, the viewers and subscribers, to vote on to see which book you'd want me to review for today. So, I'm sure you guys are curious which book won the war. Well, the winner of the Punisher 88 50th video spectacular voting thingamajig is The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 344 featuring the first appearance of Cardiac and the first cameo appearance of Cletus Cassidy. So, now that you guys know what I'm reviewing today, just sit tight, I'll be right with you. But first, cue that intro music. Hey guys, welcome back. So as I mentioned in my intro, today I'm reviewing The Amazing Spider-Man issue 344, which is the first appearance of Cardiac and the first cameo appearance of Cletus Cassidy. And I just want to let you guys know, I was thinking that um, when I do my reviews for Thursday now, uh, since it is on a current comic, I was thinking since it's at the point where you guys could still go out and get it if you haven't yet. Um, I was thinking of doing doing the review structured out as you know, good point, bad point, verdict, without you know giving away too much info on it. And the uh, weekend review, I was thinking of basically just I do the plot for you guys, and then I do a little you know good, bad, do I recommend type of deal at the end. Does that sound good? Alright. So usually I like to start with the cover first and yes I love this cover. Uh, no, not just because you have Rhino, Spidey and Cardiac on the cover but um, it's because it's an Eric Larson cover. Now for those of you who don't know who Eric Larson is um, he works over at Image Comics now and he's one of the rare artist slash illustrator who's been on a single title right from the beginning. Uh, he does the work on the Savage Dragon comics, which uh, last week uh, issue 200 just came out, and he's been on it since issue number one. So that's that's pretty impressive if you ask me. Uh, as for the actual story. Um, it starts off, we see Spider-Man, he's in this warehouse, uh, he's taking some photos for the Daily Bugle, he, he's taking pictures of these, these big giant tanker things filled with these, um, these hazardous chemicals, and we find out the chemicals that are inside them are vital to, um, uh, they're, they're vital for being used in the process of making cocaine, and we find out they're being shipped in large amounts to South America in what it, what appears to be a perfectly legal transaction. And um, we find out that the authorities are powerless against it and everything. So Spider-Man is taking it upon himself to make make it public to try and bring down this organization. Then. Um, Right, right after he starts taking these pictures, there's this big explosion, and boom, we're introduced to this new character. I'll show you. Right here. We're introduced to Cardiac. And um, he starts taking out all these workers and everything with this, uh, this uh, electric power staff he uses. And... Um, they start shooting at him and everything, and he gets a little, you know, he gets a little, uh, how do you say it? He acts like a bit of a smartass, 
<laughs> and he mentions, you know, oh, wrong move, because apparently his suit's bulletproof and everything. And um, just as he's about to kill everyone uh, by, by setting these chemicals on fire, um, Spider-Man intervenes. He webs up Cardiac's uh, power staff thing. And he tells them that um, the transaction that's being made in this warehouse is actually legal. And killing a warehouse full of people isn't the right way to, to solve the matter. Uh, although, and then we find out that Cardiac is a fan of Spider-Man, but Cardiac beg, begs, uh, not be begs him, but he, he basically disagrees with, with Spider-Man and he tells them, um, oh, where is it? He, I'm, I'm just reading my notes here. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, he tells Spider-Man, failing to see how there would be any other just way of dealing with such evil, and even though he, he doesn't want to hurt him, he will not let let him interfere with his plan. So basically, he's doing his own thing. We basically cardiac's a vigilante, and um, he he fires a bolt of plasma energy uh, at the ceiling, and it forces Spider-Man basically to you know duck out of the way, and that's cardiac's opening to make his escape. All right, end of page one. <laughs> so. Um, the next scene in the book, um, we just see Cardiac by himself, and after his escape, we see he um, he takes his mask off, and we find out actually who this person is, and he's a he's a character named uh, Doctor Elias. Uh, I think his name is Wor Wortham. Anyway, he made his first appearance in Amazing Spider-Man issue three forty three. So actually, it was the issue before this. No, I don't have it. <laughs> and um, he, after, after he, un he unmasks, he starts contemplating that as a physician, because he's a doctor, um, he's tormented that he's taken, um, he's taken lives when, when he's supposed to be preserving it. And there's only a, f a few tasks that only he can perform and what was it? Sorry if I keep pausing, guys. Um, oh yeah. So so he's tormented by a lot of lives that he's taken when he's supposed to be preserving it. And then he he says that um, there, there's only a few tasks that only he can perform. I guess he means as you know the the cardiac character and. So he goes, he, he must not let his resolve waver. So in other words, he doesn't want to, you know, um, let his drive die pretty much. He wants to keep, you know, pressing on pretty much. Then uh, we go to a scene with uh, Mary Jane and Peter Parker. And they're, they're having lunch and they're talking about some work she did for a TV show. And she's talking about this kissing scene she did. And... Peter basically makes a joke about it, and MJ starts guilting him about um, something she did with some guy named Jason Jerome. I'm guessing he's one of the TV actors. We don't really find out who he is. And uh, she then falls asleep in Peter's arms. That right there, I find, is like a very slow part of the book. <laughs> um, then, after that... Sorry, now it's getting a little dry. All right. Keep pressing on here. <clears throat> so after the whole MJ and Peter scene, we're, we're brought back to seeing uh, Dr. Elias Wortham. I still can't say his name right. And... Um, He's at Wortham Towers. It's this big, big, fancy schmancy building. And we find out he's supposed to be going to this charity event, but he cancels at the last minute. So he tells his secretary basically to get in contact with whoever's in charge 
um, double his contribution that he usually makes, and that's that. Uh, because he says he has more important matters to take care of. And um, we see he goes into his office and he talks about, at one point, he, he made a promise um, to someone very special and it led him to create one of America's finest medical empires. This is that Wortham Towers building. He, he owns a whole big company, whatever. And um, which is now being... Uh, being used as a tool against the corrupt corporate system. You know, it's like, oh my God, you know, and um, and and, plan and he plans to change that. And not only did uh, we see it, like in that scene I mentioned where he unmasked, and we find out who Cardiac really is. Not only in the book does he unmask where we find out who he is. I'll show you what I mean. You know, go back to the visual aid here. No, no, see, he, he unmasks in the alley, but then that whole part where he's in his office talking about how they're making a promise, blah, 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 we find something else out about this uh, Dr. Elias guy, and right here in this panel, see that? He's actually pulling his skin open. And you see, well, it's hard to see on my camera here, but there's all these little, like, circuits and stuff underneath. Why is that? And, um, if you're curious why, I'll tell you. Okay. This is the little segue into Dr. Elias Wortham's backstory. Basically, he's a physician and a surgeon, and he's the owner and administrator of this big bio research firm. And um, he's driven by his brother's death to research life-saving medical practices. Um, when his brother Joshua died, it was the result of a, a corporate. Uh, it was a result of corporate greed, uh, who had a had a cure for his condition ready to go but they didn't distribute it because they they didn't think it was a profitable time uh, hence his motivation against corporations and such uh, apart from his research uh, Elias uh, he replaced his heart with a, a what is it a beta particle reactor this is some fancy schmancy stuff uh, which supplies energy through his body and also, this is the part about the, the little replace, uh, ripping his skin open, you see these little circuits, um, he has a vibranium mesh under his, under his skin, his whole body. And to those of you who don't know what vibranium is, in the Marvel Universe, it is one of the strongest metals around. I don't know if it's stronger than adamantium, but I know it's, it's pretty darn sure. It's what Cap Shield's made of. Um, so yeah, he has it all under his skin. And the energy channeled through his muscles increases his speed, agility, and reflexes. And uh, the, the, the energy that, that makes him go, pretty much, um, can also be fired through his fists or his power staff. Uh, and he also uses the name Cardiac... Uh, in reference to the source of his power. So he has that beta particle reactor thing as his heart that gives him his energy. Well, that's where he get, he decided to get his name from, whatever. So, okay, so we got that out of the way. <laughs> so now you pretty much know why he's, he's called cardiac and that whole mesh stuff on your skin. Uh, where were we? Okay, uh, that's that. All right, last page. Hope you're sticking with me here, guys. And sorry if this sounds all mishmash and everything. So, so our next scene, um, we're we're shown uh, a prison cell at Rikers Island, and uh, we see Eddie Brock. I hope you guys know who Eddie Brock is. Uh, if you don't, that's the guy who becomes Venom. <laughs> uh, 
And um, so we see him working out in this prison cell, you know, he's really buffing up, you know. And we find out that he's trying to get back into, like, peak physical condition to avenge the death of the Venom symbiote. Because we find out that apparently the Venom symbiote was killed in Amazing Spider-Man 333 by a character named Styx. That's all I know. <laughs> and um, as he's working out, he's being teased by his cellmate, Cletus Cassidy. And Cassidy gives gives his own point of view to Eddie, saying that he does. He basically he's telling Eddie that he doesn't need to be Venom. All he has to do is um, he needs to have the will to do things that others lack the courage to do. Well, while Cletus is telling all this to Eddie, uh, Eddie Brock basically gets ticked off and tells him that he doesn't want to listen to him anymore. And he also, in more ways than one, mentions that he doesn't want to share a cell with him either. And um, so basically, like, under his breath, Cletus is all like, uh, you won't have to worry about that if you keep complaining. <laughs> and then, all of a sudden, he's sitting there on his bunk, and he's he's looking out his window, and he sees these two big white eyes staring at him. And it, he freaks out, and he runs, and he's, he's like, did you see that? Did you see that? And then Eddie's, Eddie's all like, well, what are you looking at, you know? And then Cletus is all like, oh, never mind. And right from that start, that's where the ball gets rolling with the whole vent, uh, carnage thing. I'll show you the scene. John, is it here? Hold on. Nope, nope, nope. Passed it. Ah, here we go. There, see? Then there's Cletus Cassidy, Eddie Brock, and there they are jibber jabbering away here in, in the prison cell. There, and then right here, you see? The big white eyes? Well, and then on the next page, he looks up and it's gone. And then there's a little blurb. And it goes um, where where uh, which, uh, Cletus Cassidy he mentions that he's like it was nothing I guess I guess it was just nothing and there's this little white thing, uh, yellow box and it goes oh no Cletus it was very much something something that will embroil the Amazing Spider-Man in a fight quite literally to the death but that's another story so we get our little hint at what's to come pretty much. Then um, the last part of the book pretty much is a, a full-out battle royal between Rhino, Cardiac, and Spider-Man. And how Rhino comes into to the picture is um, he's hired by, by this guy named Justin Hammer. And um, the reason why he hires Rhino uh, is because he gets word that Cardiac tried to, you know, blow up that warehouse full of chemicals and everything so he wanted to you know basically get payback on him and uh, so he sends Rhino after him and it just turns into this whole big big fight where's uh, where is it here oh, oh, oh. Right, see so we got all kinds of crazy stuff going on uh, what else, what else? Really cool action shots. That is really cool. Spider-Man kick, kicking the boots to Rhino. Friggin' awesome. Uh, and it basically goes goes back and forth for a while. A lot, a lot of really cool fight fight stuff. So anyway, so they're basically beating the hell out of each other. And the outcome of the fight is um, Cardiac finally sets fire to those big tanker things from the beginning of the story. And when Rhino hears that, uh, when they go off, the whole place is going to explode, Rhino basically just, he takes off, he escapes. And Spider-Man does too, after, you know, some self-realizing and all this stuff, you know, you know how Spider-Man is. And then, in the last couple of panels of the book, we see Justin Hammer again, and he's thinking of a way to take care of Cardiac, you know, to get back at him. 
since it didn't work with Rhino. And um, we find out that what he's planning on doing is he's planning on hiring Spider-Man to, to take care of him, pretty much. But see, at this point, Spider-Man is still confused because he doesn't know if he, he doesn't know if Cardiac is a good guy or a bad guy. So he's, you know, what's that expression? Between the fences? So, so that's why Justin Hammer is going to hire him and see what happens. I myself don't know what happens because I don't have the next book. Uh, I wouldn't mind reading to see what happens, but uh, that's for another story. So anyway, that's pretty much the uh, plot in a nutshell. And I, I did say I was going to try and do the Reader's Digest version, but we are at almost 20 minutes. And I apologize, but uh, that's the way she goes pretty much, I guess. <laughs> um, good points. Um, I, I, the good points are I find uh, I love the, the whole first appearance thing. And I find Cardiac's whole getup is really cool looking. Um, love the whole hint of the, the carnage thing in for what's to come. Uh, always love a comic with a, a big spread out fight scene, especially this one. It goes on for like, you know, like five or six pages. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, bad parts... Um, well, that whole Mary Mary Jane talking with Spider-Man, but the whole kissing thing and the part she's doing on TV was a little, eh, uh, what else? That That's pretty much all I could think of. Um, would I recommend this book? Uh, yeah, why not? I mean, you, you got the first, the first appearance of, of a pretty neat-looking character. You got the first appearance of a character who's about to become a very famous Spider-Man character so um, yeah sure man I, I'd recommend it if if you can find the actual physical copy pick it up because it's, oh, it's always it's always cool to have a first appearance book in your collection no matter who the character is and uh, if you can't I know I mention this a lot but maybe maybe there's a, a digital version of this book I don't know. Again, I don't read digital comics. Um, what else? That's that's pretty much it, I guess. Uh, overall, it's it's a good book. That that's all I can say. But then again, that's just my opinion to to you guys. I mean, you guys can read it and be like, "Ah, oh, this was crap," you know. Again, just my opinion. <laughs> um, let's see. Anything else? Before I end this, no, nope, can't really think of anything else. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you stuck around for the 20, almost 22 minutes now, and um, stick around for for next. Uh, come come back on Thursday. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be reviewing yet, but I'll post uh, I'll post some options on the Punisher 88 Facebook page, and um, also. Next Saturday, I will finally be reviewing uh, Iron Man issue 304, which I was supposed to do last weekend, but like I mentioned, there was the whole Christmas party thing, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to end this, try and end this now because now I'm just babbling and saying the word now a lot. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, if you like this video, uh, check out some of my other stuff, um, like it, comment on them, feel free to subscribe to my channel, uh, every Thursday and Saturday is a new video, in between I do unboxings and comic book hauls, and um, yeah, so I'll see you guys around, I'll see you on Thursday, and I'll see you on Saturday, and remember people, in the words of the great Art Spiegelman, Comic books are a gateway drug to literacy. Keep it in mind. All right, folks. Laters.